Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Jason Worley. Uh, we're back today with part two of our pulling truck parts combination, uh, talking about the engine in our 3.0 White Pro truck, legally altered, that we pull with in Northern Illinois with Illini State Pullers. So as I mentioned in the previous video, we, we just got back from the dyno uh, a week or two ago. Uh, we've got the engine still on our dyno cart. This is what we use uh, to run and test the engine on. Uh, we go and we connect that right to the dyno, um, as you can see here. And we do all of our uh, power testing, checking, trying different parts combinations, playing with tuning, and you know making the most power so that truck is dialed in and tuned for the whole season. And you're not having to change tuning. You put the engine in and it go, and you can work on your chassis and suspension and get that truck dialed in to get that power to the ground. So we'll get into the details here of the uh, turbo, exhaust side, intake side of our combinations and uh, tell you what it is we have available for you. Um, we use a lot of Hart's turbochargers, got a great relationship with uh, Dustin and Brandon over there at Hart's Diesel. Uh, just, just recently uh, came back from, from testing some of their latest and greatest stuff and giving them some feedback. So four inch intercooler plumbing down to our custom air to water intercooler. Uh, so first you'll notice the intercooler is mounted fairly low in relation to the engine. Um, it's between the frame rails, right in front of the engine, and that works out really well for mounting your ice box. So if you mount your ice box directly in front of the intercooler in your weight box, all the weight of that water and ice is, is as far forward as it can be, and you're able to run your pumps directly into the bottom of each inlet. You want to always feed your intercooler from the bottom so that your core can completely fill with water. If you're feeding from the top, the water's just dropping through and it's not fully filled with water and you're not getting the best cooling of charge air. So we have our ice box in the front here, as you can see, in the weight box. And we've got our four electric pumps that feed into each, each lower port of our intercooler here and fills that core up from the bottom. And then your return out the top, right back in to the top of the ice box, fanning out, melting that ice really nicely. So that's why we have our inlets and outlets the way we do. It's a very nice compact setup and it's all, all your weight as far forward as possible. Another thing we did special with ours is having it all be a part of the engine, allow you to take that engine in and out of the truck from the dyno stand right into the truck without having to dismantle and take everything apart. Uh, we, we've incorporated mounts on the side of the intercooler that connect right to our front engine plate so that everything can be bolted together. You don't want to mount your intercooler to the chassis and then have your pipes connected to the engine and all be a separate component. You got chassis flex going on or anything that might be happening, causing boost leaks. It's good to have your intercooler connected to your engine so that all your pipes and everything stay together and are as leak free as possible. Uh, we like to use the vibrant uh, Van Gen style clamps. Gives you a little bit room for flexibility when you're taking turbos on and off, moving things around. Obviously there's slop and bolt holes when you're, when you're mounting up the brackets and things can fluctuate a little bit. Um, so the van gens are nice for a little bit of room for air um, versus a solid V-band connection. Um, and then one of the most important things with the design of our intercooler here and why it's a great combination with our billet fabricated individual runners is because you've got a left and right runner. It's not one single plenum. So with the two separate runners, you obviously have two inlets. So your only option here, if you're running a, a typical universal intercooler core, is to have a pipe split or Y into two. Well, when you do that, it's always difficult to get equal flow to both. So when we designed our intercooler core that we build, uh, we've got our one four inch in, and then we use two three inch outs. So we're able to flow through that core and evenly distribute air to both sides of the engine through, that, through these two three inch pipes. We also have the connection line on the back of our intake runners, make even distribution of that airflow. The heart of our air to water core, we use four Garrett turbocharger air to water intercooler cores very efficient, literally zero pressure loss on these intercoolers. Uh, I've done testing at the dyno uh, with different cores um, back to back and we've had great luck running these intercoolers and keeping your intake temps uh, you know, below 55 degrees uh, throughout the whole pass. These intercoolers are available. Like I said, it's, uh, it's a great combination with our intake kit and our, our front engine plate and mounts as it's a bolt together combination. But if you're interested in an intercooler like that and you want to mount it yourself, do whatever you want, uh, they're available that way as well. 
A uh, little overbuilt for the three inch class, but again, uh, prepared for anyone that might, might want to bolt the 3.6 turbo on, is we fabricate all of our air to water intercoolers uh, with quarter inch 6061 uh, plate, uh, aluminum plate. Um, these, these end tanks, both hot side and cold side, are quarter inch thick. And we use 6061 because it's a much stronger temper than, than a 3003 series or a 5000 series which some guys will take and they'll form and they'll bend. But the problem with that material is it's, it's, it's much softer. You'll have a much larger chance of an expansion issue on these larger, flatter surfaces. Uh, with the 6061, um, you don't have that issue. We actually fabricate both end tanks and we weld the complete inside, all the inside seams, uh, before it gets welded to the core halves. So they're, they're fully welded inside and out to withstand uh, the higher boost pressures and just give you a, a longer lasting intercooler. So moving to our intake manifolds, we have our combination uh, billet machined and, and fabricated intake runner here. We don't do a full billet version, mainly just to keep the price down a little bit. Um, it's got multiple billet components that are welded together and we're able to keep the price point a little better versus a complete full billet assembly. But again, uh, individual runner ports to each head, L larger than the factory port, so if you've got ported heads opened up a little bit, you can uh, you know, port match those cylinder heads right to our intake manifold and it works really well with the two three inch van gen inlets uh, feeding off of our intercooler. We've got some additional tie bars through the center to uh, help decrease any chance of expansion of that sheet metal top hat, especially in a high boost application if you're running a three six or, or larger turbo. Uh, typically not an issue at all in the three inch class, the boost levels aren't quite as, uh, quite as excessive. Um, but we put those in all, all of our intakes um, to keep the strength there. So we spun around the motor quick there for you and we'll show you the exhaust side of this setup um, and how we have that built. Uh, this engine, we still have our uh, fabricated uh, two and a quarter inch um, headers on here. But we do obviously offer our billet steel exhaust manifolds for 01 to current Duramax. Um, however, we only offer those a, a two inch in size and on the pulling applications, we like to run the two and a quarter inch diameter, a little bit larger. Um, we don't have the billet steel ones available yet in the, in the larger two and a quarter inch option. So for the full on pulling applications, we're, we're still using the, the two and a quarter inch, um, running through our custom two and a quarter inch remote mount turbo setup. We can build it in two inch as well if, if you're running a two six charger style setup and you don't necessarily need the two and a quarter inch manifolds, uh, we would use our, our billet steel exhaust manifolds and use two inch piping. So this application, as I mentioned, is uh, all two and a quarter. We come out of the exhaust manifold and we have what we call our, our six bolt flanges. There's a lot of options to see out there with exhaust connections for these trucks. Guys running circle flanges, um, circle style bolt flanges, V-bands, things like that. We came up with this uh, six bolt design many, many years ago. We had a lot of problems on, on the factory gasket. You just had the three bolt holes and there's a large span uh, between bolt holes and we would always blow out the up pipe gaskets uh, between that span and the thinnest area of the gasket. We added three more bolt holes in each of those long cross sections as you can see here in this uh, breakaway view of our six bolt flange, essentially adding more crush to the washer through that long span. And since we came up with this design, um, we've used it on all of our pulling applications and we never deal with blowing out up pipe gaskets and you're able to continue using the, the inexpensive, easy to get your hands on OEM style um, manifold up pipe gasket from GM, five or six dollar gasket. Uh, we, we've had better luck with that versus the, the V-bands um, or any of the other options out there. So we use our six bolt flanges, uh, full two and a quarter inch plumbing. Uh, coming across, we do keep an expansion bellow in this long crossover section just because of the amount of heat and expansion that's happening in the engine there. Uh, we always do brace the bellows. If you don't put a brace on these, these bellows will eventually get weak or they'll get hot enough that they'll start to expand and eventually blow apart. So we use our, our crossover braces with, with a slotted hole, which allows everything to move a little bit, but still stay together and not blow apart completely. So coming over to this side to the turbo mount, um, we've got the T6 flange over here. We've gone through different ways of mounting these over the years um, with, with pedestal mounts down to the engine block. And, and other, other options. What we found to work best over time and simplest to work on is bringing the mount bracket right off of that T6 flange back to the exhaust header, uh, as, you, as you can see here. 
This allows you to swap out turbos, center sections, or exhaust housings without having a secondary mount to worry about. All of the support is coming right from that exhaust side, and that's holding the whole weight of the turbo. Uh, big heavy-duty steel mount um, back to the uh, exhaust manifold and cylinder head. So two and a quarter inch plumbing to a nice T6 flange. This is a, a T6 flange that we, we do offer these available um, for guys that are building their own exhaust system. Uh, we have a nice CNC machined uh, one inch thick flange. We have them available for two and a quarter to T6 as well as two inch to T6. And then we do offer some T4 versions as well. If you're wanting to build your own setup, we can sell those nice adapter flanges. Really nice and slick to weld a full-size pipe to, not have to worry about crushing the pipe or reforming the end of the pipe. Um, nice taper from round into that T6 flute. Um, so that wraps up the exhaust side of our uh, combination here on uh, our, our 3.0 setup. Um, if you've got any questions about truck pulling, about a combination you're interested in putting together, uh, or if you want to do a 3.0 build, uh, feel free to contact us and we'd be happy to talk with you. Thanks a lot for tuning in.